So when we get to the Leaning Tower of Pisa, I'm going to try to go up into the tower. Hopefully if I can get tickets and I'm going to try to get a view of the city, a panoramic view. And then after we leave Pisa, we're going to be headed to the city, um, back to Florence. And we're going to be seeing the Statue of David, which was, uh, which was made by Michelangelo. That being said, oh, wow, this lighting is really great. So then my shots right here, duly noted. All right, till then, we're headed to the train station right now. Okay, so when it comes to taking the local trains in Italy, you need to make sure that you verify your ticket. So verifying your ticket is gonna be a little green little kiosk, little small thing. And you're going to insert your ticket with this orange piece to the left side and, insert it and, and it will clip it basically like that. You need to have your ticket verified. That's what it's there for basically. And whenever you travel to another country, whenever you're using their metro or the train system or anything, I recommend buying your ticket from actually like a person, not just from a kiosk the first time and ask them if there's anything you need to do. Like you need to verify your ticket, ticket in anywhere or scan it anywhere so that you won't have to deal with something happening with the conductor or the people coming through. I mean, telling you have to get off the train. So that's another travel hack talk to someone and buy your ticket from someone first and ask them any questions you have about using the train system in that country. Alright, so we finally made our way into Pisa and all I can say is the city is very beautiful. I just love like the little alleyways and everything. And that I feel like when you go to another country, a lot of people don't expect to see like the nationalism in other countries. Like they expect to see the American flag or they expect to see no flags. Like we're not the only country in the world who loves their country dearly. You can see that these Italians love the country dearly. And uh, we were thinking to possibly go into this restaurant there right here, this pizzeria. And uh, that's what I'm saying when I told you guys earlier in the past video, I'll link it up above, that you should check out alleyways you should get off the main road you should look in the alleyways sometimes that's the best character and you'll find a lot more of the culture there than just being on the main streets the main streets are a lot of times where they have all these restaurants and restaurantes as i was these restaurantes for tourists you know to chop jump out at and to go eat right there but a lot of times this is where like a lot of the locals eat and the locals eat at the other restaurants too don't get me wrong the fabulous great restaurants but that being said we're gonna go to leaning tower pizza now Oh, as you guys can see right now, I'm at the Ling Tower of Pisa, and this was constructed in 1194, I believe, at least the late 1100s. And as they were building it, they saw that it started to gradually lean, and it actually went to five degrees. That's that's what it is currently right now. And you know, they say that they don't know who built this thing because the guy, the architect, knew it was going to lean, and they want his name on it. But 1990s, it kept on leaning more and more, and they were getting really scared here. And they kept on, you know, using counterweights, like putting counterweights right here and right here, because the P P Leaning Tower pieces is 14 tons of marble. And they shut it down, but they finally did something to where, you know, it's able to stand how it is still now. And it's back at five degrees leaning. And, you know, you can actually go all the way up to the top and you can get a really great view of Pisa, the city in Italy. And that is what we're about to do. So as you guys join my journey right now, let's, let's get it. Leaning Tower pieces just had to. When you come to the Leaning Tower of Pisa, you're going to head down this road right here, and you're going to see this ticket area. You should see the Leaning Tower of Pisa, and you're going to see this ticket area, and you're going to go straight to this orange building, little orange brown looking building, to buy your tickets for the Leaning Tower of Pisa. And once, that, once that's done, then you're going to head over here to the line. There should be some army soldiers over there, and then you're going to get in line. When you go up to the Leaning Tower of Pisa, no bags are allowed. Camera and phone are allowed though, so make sure you have somebody who can watch that stuff or you're going to have to pay for a locker to put your stuff in there. So we're gonna go get some tickets right now. So this is a, what we are about to, this is what we're about to undertake. We're gonna undertake this journey of going all the way up there. I can't believe we're gonna go all the way up there, but we're gonna try. That being said, let's get it. Dead. All right, so. We're going up the Leaning Tower of Pisa right now, and I'm sure you guys can just feel. 
I'm sure you guys can just feel the lean, or I can feel the lean, guys. You can like feel the lean of going against the wall. Like, what? All right, I'm just joking with y'all. Can make this a sport. How fast can I go up here? It's going up these stairs. I'm tired going up these stairs. Why did I choose to go up the leaning tower of pizza? My dad. Waiting on my dad. There you go, Dad. Kelly, get that workout in. You about to close all those. You about to close all your rings on your Apple Watch. Lean. Dad, how are you feeling? I'm leaning on the everlasting grace. Let's look at that view. All right, so update you again. We took a break. We're almost at the top of Leaning Tower of Pisa. So just look at this town. Just imagine what the top is gonna look like. So you know what? I'm gonna show you guys what the top looks like. Mm -hmm. So I recommend whenever you guys come up here to the Leaning. Let me get some better light. I'm black. All right, that's better. I recommend when you guys come up to the Leaning Tower of Pisa, you come up with a friend and you guys get ready. Bring your jackets if you're coming in the little colder months. And even if you think it's not gonna be cold, remember you're gonna be going upstairs and you're gonna be high up in the air. So you're going to need, like he got really windy up there to where my dad was like, you're not gonna fall, Davion. But you know what, like, I'm still afraid of falling. Even though I've jumped out of airplanes before. But yeah, the Leaning Tower of Pisa just gives you such a nice view. Now, we're on the second level. When I say the second level, there's two points that you can get off on. So whenever you're heading up, excuse me, Dad. Whenever you're heading up um, the Leaning Tower of Pisa, you're going to actually come right here. And you're gonna think, oh, I'm up here. No, you're not up here. Cause then you gotta go up this. You gotta go up this and go all the way up those stairs. So major key alert, remember you have two different levels to actually go up on. That being said, we are now going to be heading down the tower and we're gonna catch back up with my mom, my dad's wife, and we're going to head to, back to Florence, or how do you say it again? Florence, we're heading back to Florence and we're gonna go see the statue of David, um, which was crafted and made by Michelangelo. Huh? Is it Firma? 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 I believe it's Firma. One moment, one moment, please, one moment. The measurements of the tower, the monument is about 58.33, 36, excuse me, meters high at the foundation and over 55 meters above ground. I'm here in Florence at the Academia Museum and I'm visiting and able to see the statue of David. You talk about an enormous life-like sculpture created by Michelangelo. It is amazing. Um, I'm excited to be here with my family. But more exciting is I remember the story of David and Goliath. And as I look at the sculpture, it's like I see a slingshot in David's hand and a, and a stone. And I think about what that, res, you know, what that resembles and what that means as I'm looking at it. And more importantly, I want to give credit to the artist. When you think about the artist, you think about all the details. If you look at the fingers, you look at the hands, you look at the feet, you look at the physique of the statue and you're able to see so much detail. What a masterpiece Michelangelo has created. So now we are leaving the statue of David and where are we headed to? Looking at other things in the Academia Museum. You can't just give all the credits to Michelangelo. You know what's so interesting and the great thing about going to see the statue of David is that going to school, going to all these European history classes and stuff, and seeing this art, seeing the statue of David, seeing Mona Lisa, seeing all this stuff, and then coming to see it in Italy is really like such a dream come true. So it like brings out life, which is probably why I love history so much. Honestly, I'm so blessed and so thankful. I don't want you guys to think that I'm just out here just living life and not understanding I'm blessed. So that being said, you guys have a great one. Ciao, for real. Ciao this time, for real. Oh.